Welcome back to Shannon's Club TV, where all motoring enthusiasts can explore the rich heritage of cars in Australia. In each episode, we offer a local perspective on our feature car and get some valuable tips from the Shannon's auctions team. Today, we have a rare opportunity for an up-close look at our feature car with Nissan technical trainer, Anthony Fredrickson. So let's kick off with the high-tech monster from Japan they called Godzilla. Nissan's R32 Skyline GTR. The first batch of 50 Nissan GTRs destined for the Australian market were built in May and June 1991. They were then modified locally to meet the Australian design rules, acquiring child seat restraints, a fuel filler restrictor, high mounted brake light and other such goodies. 50 more cars were built in August. All local GTRs got Blaupunkt sound. The combination of the Skyline R32 body, 2.6 litre twin turbocharged straight six and the special Atessa ETS four wheel drive transmission made for a road car uniquely ready for the racetrack. It now seems astonishing that Nissan Australia succeeded in selling just 63 R32 GTRs brand new. Although at $110,000 the GTR was just two thirds the price of a standard Porsche 911, the Nissan brand just did not have the cachet. In 1991, no other standard production car short of a Ferrari could run a 13.7 standing 400 metres. With drive to all four wheels, the GTR was essentially a racetrack weapon with a Rego label. Mark, Nissan's decision to go all-wheel drive with the GTR was not just a triumph of rule exploitation, but it was also a major triumph of engineering, wasn't it? Oh, it really was. I mean, you think how high-tech that car was at the time. It was phenomenal. Even it is high-tech in a lot of ways nowadays. But I think the R32 GTR had always had a, a bittersweet relationship with its rival teams and fans because they admired its incredible capabilities but they also resented its unfair advantage with all-wheel drive in pretty much equal measure. More than a hint of envy, I suspect. Yeah, sure. Yeah. At Bathurst, the R32 actually proved too good for its own cause, and we can probably blame it alone for the introduction of the V8 supercars formula. But the reputation of the car grew, and grey imports flooded the market. Buy a locally delivered car if you can. Now, here's the thing. Those ADR modifications make it easier to distinguish a locally delivered GTR from a grey import. The local cars came in three colours, jet silver, red pearl metallic and black pearl metallic. They were also supplied with an owner's compendium, an idea later adopted by HSV. Claimed maximum power was 206 kilowatts, but the reality was probably upwards of 250. The GTR took advantage of one of the fads of the time, four-wheel steering, and that certainly contributed to its brilliant dynamics. The R32 GTR seemed utterly different from all lesser Nissans, even the 300ZX. But its true heritage was from the Prince Mark, which merged with Nissan. Mark, is the R32 GTR one of the greatest touring cars in history? Oh, it sure is. I mean, it was so dominant in Australia that they had to ban it. The R32 Nissan GTR was the definitive Group A touring car, blessed with a combination of superior all-wheel drive traction and ferocious outputs of up to 700 brake horsepower from its twin turbocharged engine. The GTR made traditional rear-wheel drive opponents obsolete overnight. It was no surprise that it earned the nickname Godzilla because it really was a monster from Japan which destroyed everything in its path. It went unbeaten in the Japanese Touring Car Championship from 1989 to 1993, won production car titles in the UK and USA and the 1991 Spa 24-hour race in Belgium. In Australia, it enjoyed arguably its most satisfying success in Group A, given the high quality of local Ford Sierra, BMW M3 and Holden Commodore V8 rivals. The factory cars, locally prepared by Gibson Motorsport for Jim Richards and Mark Scaife, swept all before them and were, unquestionably, the world's toughest and fastest GTRs. 
John Gibson Motorsports cars were so good, I know that Nissan head office in Japan asked Gibson son not to bring his GTRs to race in Japan in case they embarrassed their local efforts. I mean, that shows how good they were. What it, they were doing. it shows how good they were, and it also mm. gives a bit of an indication of how important Australia was for in every it respect really for Nissan. You yeah. know, they sent the cars out here for people to buy or not buy, mm. and, and it was really the world focus for developing the GTR to its potential as a race car. It really was, yeah. The R32 GTR made its belated Australian debut beyond the halfway point of the 1990 Australian Touring Car Championship and played a decisive role in Richard's hard-fought title win with a runaway performance at the final round. And although finishing well down due to drivetrain glitches, Godzilla showed ominous signs of its future dominance at Bathurst that year too. Two factory GTRs fronted for the 1991 championship and they destroyed the competition. Nissan won seven of the nine rounds, finishing one, two in six of them, with Richards and Scaife also claiming first and second in the title chase. They also shared in a demoralising one-lap victory at Bathurst to give Nissan its first mountain win after a decade of trying. Although governing body cams imposed substantial weight penalties and boost restrictions on the GTRs for 1992, the end result was another one-two finish in the championship, and a second victory for Richards and Scaife at Bathurst. Fact is, the only way CAMS could end Godzilla's dominance was to ban it under a new set of rules for 1993, which, let's face it, was the ultimate compliment. Remember, you can read the full road and race histories on the Shannon's Club website. My name is Anthony Fredrickson, although I must say everyone calls me Fred. And this car here is a 1991 Nissan Skyline R32 GTR. This is actually the first R32 GTR ever to be sold in Australia. We checked the VIN on it, and this car is stock as a rock. And it still even has the dealership sticker on the back. It still has the teeny tiny exhaust system on it. It still has the twin turbocharged uh, RB26 engine, electronic fuel injection, electronic ignition as well. But this even has the boost restrictor in it still. So it's still only running 10 psi. But in Japan there was a gentleman's agreement at that stage between automotive manufacturers to curb the number of horsepower and torque. But it's been known as a very strong engine. It also has a thing in the centre console, not sure whether you've heard of it, a cassette deck. It's done nearly 196,000 k's and the technology that's in it, even though it's 25 years old, is still state of the art today. It is a true great driver's car that is very easy to drive on the road. The clutch is light and it is a fantastic car to drive, it's just beautiful. Some people say it's race bred, I certainly think it is, because it has such a big pedigree in Australian and international motor racing. It was the first of the so-called Godzillas. The race car was so competitive, it was banned. How cool is that? Shannon's National Auctions Manager, Chris Borobon, joins us to give us an update on the R32 Nissan GTR. Welcome, mate. Hey, Mark. How are you? Good job. Christoph, I'm fascinated mm. by this GTR. Yeah, it was a car too. that had a lot of trouble selling brand new. Mm. Yeah. And then the market was flooded with grey imports. Mm. It's better, isn't it, to get a locally delivered car, do you think? Yeah, I think that's, you know, that that's, I think, proved, proved mm. the case in the last few years, you know, try and find one of the hundred Australian delivered cars. Mm. I mean, if we, if we go back to 1991, when the cars were launched in Australia, mm. the dearest Nissan on the market was probably twenty-five dollars to $30,000 in the sky, in the way of a Skyline or a Patrol. Mm. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we've got this GDR come on the market at $110,000. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, with a Nissan Everyone badge. Everyone was laughing at it. How, how much? much? Yeah. How much? Yeah, 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 I remember you that. Know, yeah. And, and I think, you know, a lot, a lot of people forgot to see 
what you were buying in the package, you know. Mm. It was a very, very capable car, mm. even though it had the success in the touring car series that we saw here in 91, 92. I mean, it got me excited. I mean, I love the GDR. Oh, it's one of my fantastic favorites. fantastic car. And, yeah. and, you know, and to watch how the GDR annihilated everything else on the racetrack. Yeah, yeah. And I ha haven't spent some time with uh, Fred Gibson and Jim mm. Richards over the years and, and and appreciating what they went through yeah. uh, in getting that car on a racetrack back mm. in the day. And the car was costing them half a million dollars to, mm. to get ready, if not more, compared to some of the other cars who were costing half the price mm. at so the time. You do get some of these through the auctions house. We have, you? absolutely. And, uh, yeah. do, do you ever get the original, do you ever get a one owner, locally delivered car, still with the owner's compendium? That'd be nice. We Service have, we have. We've, we've received, you know, and they're coming increasingly hard to find, but mm. we have received the one owner GDR with the original keys, and, and books and that, that's got to be the ultimate. It, it is, yeah. and and you know to try and find those. I mean, we we predominantly got the three colours: the black, uh, the metallic uh, maroon, and the silver. Silver, silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Um, you know, I, I think you know that the black probably was lesser number built, and, mm. and that seems to be probably the more favoured one still. Oh, is it? Um, but but look, to try and find a good Australian delivered car. Uh, with low ownership history and uh, and low Ks, that's the way are to go. The, are yeah. the grey imports worth 50% or 70% of, of a locally delivered car Look, in I, comparable condition? I think we're seeing the grey imports also increasing in value. And, and I think what's interesting is to try and find some of the later grey imports, 93, 94 models, the yes, last of them, yes. that came out as a V-Specs. So, um, yeah, but do you, do you see this car as following in the footsteps of something like Toyota's 2000 GT? I mean, this car seems to be massively undervalued considering what it achieved, the technological yeah. you know, yes. wizardry in it. Yes. It's, it's got to have massive potential to grow in value, doesn't it? I think it's still got potential, definitely. Yeah. Um, um, you know, f f for the technology that you're buying in the car, incredible, incredible for its day, mm. and it, it probably was a little bit unloved. And I think, uh, again, with a generational thing that's changing now, I mm. think we're starting to see the cars Big appreciation appreciation come back yeah. into it. Yeah. 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 yeah, oh, that's great, Chris. Mm. A real modern classic. I yeah, think. absolutely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you want your own image of the Nissan R32 GTR in competition, check out Autopic's incredible photo archive. John, looking back at the R32, I mean, what a great car. Uh, uh, the definitive race car, and I guess the definitive road car, all in one package. Well, can you think of a better road car? Incredible thing. I mean, room in the back for two people, all-wheel drive, phenomenal performance, great brakes, great looks. And uh, Good interior. Nissan reliability, Nissan engineering. I mean, that car could just keep going forever if you looked after it. I think an awesome car on the road as well as one for the track. Certainly one to stick in the garage. Well, we hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the fabulous Nissan Skyline R32 GTR. And we look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.